Hey, what's up guys? The objective of this video series is going to be to walk you step by step in creating a fully functional virtual Windows Server 2012 domain. Well, actually we're just going to be prepping this to start another video series on the new domain controllers and everything. But this video series is just strictly to get your virtual environment laid out, installed, and configured correctly. Um, so that way it can be separate from your host network, which is, in my case, is going to be my home network. Um, your case, it may be in at work or something for in your enterprise environment. Who knows? But um, it's going to be completely separate, yet it's still going to have internet access in order to, to do updates and provide services and whatnot. Now, there's a couple prereqs before getting started. One, your host computer. Now, the host computer is what... I consider my main computer that I'm actually working on right now and doing this screencast on. I recommend making sure your CPU is a 64-bit CPU with the virtualization support within the BIOS. Now as far as RAM goes, my recommendation is at least 4 gigs of RAM in your host computer. The reason being is we're going to install three machines and be running those at the same time. And you know, you, you don't have to allocate a lot of memory to those, but um, you know, the more the better. More the, the, the better the experience. Also on the host machine, make sure that you're running a 64-bit operating system. Here I'm running Windows 7, with, that's actually 64-bit. And then a few more prereqs is going to include making sure you download the ISOs um, for your operating system. So this one you can see that uh, this is my Windows Server 2012 release preview or release candidate. This is my PFSense ISO and then also my Windows 8 pre-release view 64-bit. Now, the links for these will be provided in the description down below. So once you have the prereqs all met, it's time to let's once you have met all the prereqs, it's time to start setting up the virtual machines. We will begin installing Windows 2012 server in VirtualBox. So what we want to do first is go ahead and we're going to just click New. And it's a really simple wizard. We'll just hit Next on that one. This one, we're going to name it something. Um, you can name it whatever you're going to name the, the computer name once it's installed, or you can name it something else because this is just the name for VirtualBox. Uh, this is going to be a Windows 2012. So what I'm going to do is call it uh, 2012 server. And let's do Windows 2012 server. Then what we're going to do in the version is, because they don't have a 2012 version listed yet, I'm just going to select Windows 2008 64-bit. All right, we're going to hit Next. Now this is where you're going to allocate how much RAM you want to dedicate to this machine. Um, they're recommending at least 512. I recommend at least a gig to get somewhat decent performance out of it. So we'll go ahead and hit Next. This is um, creating a startup disk. Yeah, we're just going to leave the default. We're going to create a new hard disk. We'll hit next. It's asking you what type of hard disk you want to create. We're going to leave the default VDI. All right, on the storage details, we're going to leave it as dynamically allocated. What this means is if, if we give this virtual machine, let's say, 20 gigs of space, it's going to kind of block off that 20 gigs on your hard drive but it's not going to actually use all that 20 gigs. It's going to use whatever it needs for whatever you're putting on there and dynamically adjust according to you know how much stuff you're putting on there. Fixed size is going to use the whole 20 gigs and it's going to show when you look at your um, C drive it's going to show you know 20 gigs less of free space because it's what you're fixing that drive. Go ahead next. Virtual disk file location now select the size of the disk. I'm going to leave 25 gigs. I would say you probably want about 20 gigs on this one, minimum. You'll probably be using about half of it, but it gives you a little room to, to expand because once it's set, it's very hard to try to adjust this size. So if you can err on the side of allocating more disk space, uh, in the long run, I think you'll be better off. Next, all right, here's the uh, review or summary. We're going to just go ahead and create it. And another review, I guess. So now that we have our server set up, here's all the details of that server, everything we kind of selected. Before we move any further with actually trying to start this up, 
we need to go into the settings. So go ahead and click on the virtual machine, click on settings. Now this is the probably the most important part is going into your network section here. Uh, make sure, making sure you have at least adapter one enabled, which we do. And by default, it's set to use NAT, which I don't want to use NAT. What I want to use is internal network. So we're gonna go ahead and just switch this to internal. That way we don't have access to the other machines. We're just kind of separating it right now from our other network. Um, and then there's another thing I like to do, and I believe it's in display. This is just something I've always done since I started using VirtualBox. The video memory, I'm just going to go ahead and max that out, 120 megabytes. When you're viewing the console session here with when it's running, I find that it gives you a little bit better performance when you're connected to it. I'm not going to enable any of this stuff. Other than that, I think everything we're pretty good at the moment. Um, you can either go into storage here and attach that ISO, but we're not going to do it that way. Because the, f the cool thing with VirtualBox, the first first time you've powered up, it notices that there's no ISO and that it asks you if, if you want to go ahead and attach it. So we're going to hit start. Okay, it's just talking about the keyboard shortcuts and, and everything. But um, right now, just remember your right control key is to get the mouse back out of the virtual machine. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Welcome to the first run wizard. And notice that it's our first time running it. So we're going to hit next. It's asking us to select an installation media. This is where we're going to attach that ISO to its um, CD-ROM drive. So what I'm going to do is browse to it. It's on my desktop in the folder called ISOs. This is our server. I'm just going to go ahead and double click that, hit next, and start. All right, same thing there. So Permission reports that I guess OS does not support mouse. Who cares? All right, so here we go. We're just going to go ahead and pretty much accept the defaults here. I just want to install now. I'll let this install. Okay, it's asking us which one we want to install. I don't want to do the core. The core is just pretty much a command line based interface. And uh, let's just go ahead and throw the GUI on there. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do a custom. I just want to select that 25 gig drive that we we created. Hit next. And it's going to go ahead and do its thing. Okay, now we're presented with some settings. We want to set in a, a, the default administrator password. Now I'm not going to be, in the long run, I'm not going to be using this administrator password at all for anything except for recovery purposes or whatever, but um, I'm going to go ahead and put in my password that I want to use. Click finish. And it complained that this doesn't meet the requirements. Now 2012, just like 2008, um, there's some uh, password requirements, so I'm going to have to add some characters to that. Hopefully, yep, that'll work. Okay, so this is what it looks like, I guess, from the default screen. This is the first time I'm using the 2012 server, so it's kind of a learning process for me as well. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Delete, I believe. What's the shortcut? I don't remember what the shortcut is for this now. Host Delete, so it's going to be my right control key plus the delete key. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop in that password I just set up. It's going to create the profile. Now just a tidbit of information. When we change the networking settings on this for the networking stuff to internal, at this point this machine does not have access to the internet. Just keep that in mind. We're going to be working on that as well. Um, I just want to physically get the machines installed, or virtually, or however you want to say that. I want to just get these machines installed in VirtualBox, and uh, what we'll be doing is configuring PFSense to allow these machines to get out. Such as just, it's kind of like setting up an actual office. You're going to have some sort of a firewall or a router, which is going to be our PFSense, that's going to be allowing access to the internet for all these computers and whatnot. So. Okay, I'm not going to go into the configuration of this server at the moment. Just know that it is installed and pretty much ready to rock and roll. So I will go ahead and just minimize that. So in the next video, we're going to be installing Windows 8. And then the following video, we're going to be installing PFSense.